Grandpa, I'm trying to assimilate with these people. It's a time element. I know, I know, I know exactly what to do. It's just... Hey, Chris. Hey, man. Welcome to my home. So this is for the, uh, the birthday for your father, James Reardon. Uh, I think it's a roast. Right, right, right. A roast. A roast. Well, God, I don't remember a lot about your father. I know that for sure white hair... So she still has the white hair, right? Oh, for sure. And uh, he had that little kind of like a demented ferret look when you go with his mustache like this. You go the length of the teeth. It was, it was charming. He thought it was endearing. <laughs> Not really a lot. But um, I remember we wrote, we wrote the song Pablo together. And he, uh, he'd say, well, what are you, you going to write for the first line? So I'd write a line. And he'd go, and then I'd probably write something like, I said, well, write something like blah, 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 blah. And then he comes and he goes, yeah. And then you'd go, and I'd write, and he'd say, and then I'd probably say something like, and I'd go, well, just say something like, and this was his process. And I'm sure you found this through working with him before on the, in the film stuff. He's kind of a guy who has many, many hats. In fact, a lot of people don't know that at, in his closet at home, James has a propeller hat with a grip hat, a boom hat, a director hat, a producer hat, and when he's talking to you, he'll flip them around. Uh... I know you mentioned to me before when you were working with him, you'd go, Dad, hey, Dad, Dad, I got a question. Dad, Dad, ignore you, right? Completely. Same thing with me. I'd go, Jim, Jim, I, Jim, Jim, and he'd turn and he'd look. And I'd go, Sir James, and then, he'd, then, he, then he would acknowledge you. Friggin' Sir James crap. I don't, I don't know what that's about. For the record, and this is for everyone in Illinois, in the relationship that I had with, uh, with James Reardon, I was not the weird one. In fact, people from uh, cults would come to, to James to get their whack on. I think most people out there know that uh, Jimmy is a big practical joker. Remember in Malibu once, he, uh, he put a strange woman in my bed. And I lost my wife over that. I mean, there's no other reason for a woman to be in my bed. It had to be Jim. I remember about two weeks ago, I got a text message from James saying, I'm in the fourth row at a Warrant concert. It's really loud. So I text back, what songs do they play? And he goes, it's really loud. <laughs> Apparently, he's, uh, he can't even read a text if it's too loud. You know the, uh, the scene in A Star is Born with James Mason and Judy Garland when they both look at each other and they are the most lost, lonely, sick people in the world? That pretty well sums up Reardon's uh, M.O. He gets a look sometimes that is beyond the abyss of, of depraved. It's so sad that you really don't want to know what this man's thinking of. I mean, even this coming from Creed that I don't want to know what he's thinking. I'm so sorry, Jim. All right. With all uh, due sincerity, hi, my old friend. How you been? Good to see you. Creed from L.A., working with your son. So I hope you have a good birthday. I know. It's just a roast. You don't even count your birthdays anymore, do you? Nice color in the hair. You still have it. Fuck you. I hope they roast you well. I did my best. So later, skater. Hi, Grandpa Jim. I made you a big spicy, spicy pepper. Pepper, pepper, pepper. My favorite Grandpa Jim story is um, playing silly games and um, playing pinch man. Aren't you going to eat? You might be hungry. Oopsies! You're still not eating. Why aren't you eating? Anyways, I'm making food. You want a smoothie? Hmm? I guess that's a yes. Okay. A pepper smoothie. Here. 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 Can't. Here. Hmm. Hi, 
my grandpa Jim. My favorite grandpa Jim story is. Uh, uh, I don't know that many. My favorite story is take a snooze. Take a snooze. I'm thirsty. My favorite thing with it. My favorite thing with Grandpa Jim is playing Take a Snooze. I like doing with Grandpa Jim is doing art stuff with him. Yeah. I like hanging out with Grandpa Jim because he's cool, he's awesome, and he's funny. Well, he always embarrassed me. Like, I don't have, like, a one-story <laughs> story. He would always tease me when I stayed out till 4 in the morning and he called all of my friends, <laughs> every single one, and asked them where I was. That was embarrassing. Hi, Dad. You raised me to be loving. You raised me to be strong. You taught me to have a relationship with God. You, I got some of my strongest traits from you your passion, your creativity, your Irish Catholic guilt. You must have kneeled on enough pencils for the both of us. But in all seriousness, I love you. You're the best dad in the world, and I hope people aren't too mean to you. Hey Jim, how's it going? Uh, I just wanted to say real quick that uh, it's an honor to have you as my father-in-law. I mean, really, never did I ever think that one day I would be married to the daughter of the author of one of my favorite books, the Oliver Stone biography. Um, you must have some stories to tell about writing that. Uh, well, we know you do because we've all heard them a thousand times. So I'm in, I'm in the fantasy football um, league this year, so you better watch out. I just found out that there's actual money involved, um, so I'm going to take yours if you've got any. But seriously... Have a great roast. I hope you're enjoying the night, and take care. Hey, how's it going, Dad? Um, I hope you're having a great time. We are certainly uh, missing you and uh, enjoying putting this thing together for you. It's, it's been a treat. It's been a lot of work, man. You're a lot of work, you know, quite frankly. Um, but I'm doing this for you because, you, you know, you raised us right. You raised us right, and uh, you tried to give us all the good things in life, and... Uh, you guys know he'd give, he's Jim's the kind of guy who's going to give you the shirt off his back. I mean, you just got to ask him for it. Don't do it right now, but, you know, later on, ask him. He'll give it to you. And, uh, and that was the way it was growing up in our house. You know, anytime I needed, you know, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it was, he was right there. He was right there. He always gave me whatever I needed to get through the day, the week, the weekend, wherever it was. And it's probably why he never had any money of his own. And he still doesn't because still, he still sends it to me, you know, and he borrows it from you guys. And you know who you are. When I was a kid, speaking of money, I, uh, I, I cost my dad about $500 in a, in a medical deductible bill one time, and uh, I, I got in this fight, and it wasn't cool. Um, he had to show up at the hospital. I, I broke the only bone in my body I ever broke, uh, broke a knuckle fighting with this kid. And, uh, and at the time, I, was, I, was, I just pierced my ear. I was kind of getting into my metal phase, and uh, so, of course, we got home, and he's pissed, and he's blaming it all on that evil rock and roll music. And, um, the funny part was, is he, we went up to my room and he was like, give me the earring, you know, like that, that caused the, the fight. And, uh, and then he took four or five of my albums. Um, they were actually his albums out of my closet, like my Metallica, Iron Maiden, you know, some other punk, whatever it was. And, uh, and he broke him over his knee and he broke these, this, it had to be more than four or five because he slammed him over his knee pretty good. And he breaks the records and you can hear him pop, but then he limps out of my room and the old guy's walking around for like a limp for like a week. And every time I see him, I can't help cracking up. You know, I mean, it was, it was one of those moments though where, he, you know, he tried really hard to get it right. <laughs> and, uh, and you can see about, a, about three or four days later, he, uh, he came back up in the room and uh and he had four or five six more of his albums um that he gave me and he gave me like bob dylan and uh tom petty and and some steve miller and and uh some neil young and he was trying to make good he was trying to make good you could see that you know he wanted to get it right and 
He always did. He always did try to get it right. I love you, Pops. Dad never put any pressure on us to do anything other than, like, just go to school. Get that done. That was important, you know. Um, problems were, you know, handled differently, though, I think, than, you know, anywhere else. Is Whenever there was problems, we were either, we were always, we were always told to pray. And if we weren't praying about a problem, we were, you know, we were picking our nose, you know. Um, it's definitely okay to pick your nose in our house. That was pretty commonplace. You get the whole thumb up there. Hey. How do you think those nostrils got so wide, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. This is, uh, this is one of my favorite pictures of me and Jim together. Um, so, as you can see, there was clearly no hope for me. Yeah, right there. See that? That's the look. That's the look. The nostrils. You always made sure to tell us you loved us. Um, every day. I don't think we got out of the house too many mornings without hearing that, or went to bed too many mornings without hearing that. That's that's stayed with me. That's that's the stuff I pass down to the kids. That's a big part of your legacy with me. I guess I turned out all right. I don't know. What do you think? Eh. <laughs> eh. Kumbaya. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> it's your fault, actually, Dad. It's all your fault. I will always blame you for everything. All right. That was it. That um, didn't go. What, what? Take it. What she wants to say is how cool it was having a brother like me. And the only way it was cool to have a brother like me is having a dad like you. <laughs>